José Bocanegra, and I'm a representative for El Comité. El Comité is a community-based organization of, uh, led by immigrants, uh, mainly undocumented workers. I'm, uh, I've been in this, in this business for a number of years, organizing in different communities. But uh, immigration has always been kind of the heart of my, my focus for years. One of the problems that we've had in this country is that uh, it's like, uh, what was his name? Uh, one of the dictators that was about to be executed. He said, poor Mexico, so close, so far from God and so close to the United States. You know, and that in itself kind of tells you what kind of situation relationship Mexico has had besides having had half of its territory annexed to the United States under the whole concept of expansionism, you know, from sea to sea, Chinese Sea, all that, that stuff that's been uh, ingrained in you guys and myself in history. One of the things that, that is really interesting, uh, Mexico has always had migration to the United States from Mexico. My grandparents migrated into this country, and they were deported during the 1930s. Half of my family was born here in the United States, and the other half was born in Mexico. My father didn't know he was a, a U.S. citizen until he was around 19 years of age. And he came and worked as a, he came and worked here as a bracero, not knowing that he was a, a U.S. citizen. You know, and that's happened to a lot of families recently, a lot of families. But what was happening then, it's the same thing that's happening now in Mexico. The selling of the oil, the selling of all the basic, basic products, the privatization to foreign countries of the oil, of everything, of the press, of the transportation, the corn, you know, everything, everything that, that Mexico has. Mexico now is having to import the majority of its corn, the majority of its chile, and the majority of its uh, beans, when Mexico wasn't, didn't have that at the point. Now, you know, we talk about International Immigrants Day, which is what we're celebrating, or supposed to be recognizing today, and we start thinking about what's happening throughout the world. Mexico is not an exception. What's happened to Mexico is happening throughout the, United, throughout the world. The whole process of, of income, the whole what's happening in Spain, what's happening in Greece, what's happening in Italy, where people are unemployed in large numbers. You know, this can just point out to one thing, is that the project that's called capitalism is not functioning. It's not working. It's not sustainable. It's not going to exist for too long. But in the meanwhile, it's making millions and millions of people miserable. Not only here in, the, in that continent, which is the Americas, but throughout the world. So one of the things that we have to start looking at is start bringing things like this down. Now, this detention center is nothing more than um, Enterprise. You know, a camp to uh, imprison people. The detention center is a private facility, like the brothers already said. It was built with public monies. All of you, all of us, put money into this. If you have a bank account with Wells Fargo, you have contributed to jail. If you are in any way um, working with you know, and we're, we're still we're still re looking at about the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. We're trying to review whether they have contributed uh, over a million dollars to the Geo Group, and people are studying that. But it wouldn't surprise us because even United Way has provided money to Geo. <coughs> they get money from a, a lot of different sources, but the major part of their funding is from a, incarcerating people. The policies that are established in this country help create and help maintain facilities like this. The, the policy that the Obama administration is pursuing of deporting people in large numbers 
over, over 2 million people by the end of this year, Obama would have deported. He would have deported more people than all the rest of the presidents put together. Isn't that incredible? This progressive person is doing this. Right now, at the national level, there are people working, trying to have Obama extend the deferred action to 11 million people. And he said he can't do it. He's already provided deferred action for 1.7 million young people in this country. And also to the parents of people that are in the military who are undocumented. So he can't say that he cannot do this. People are trying to stop the deportations in many ways. They're stopping buses. They're calling their congressmen. You know, we have, uh, what's his name, Adams, Adam Smith, who is our, our representative for, the, for that district in the south end now. He used to, he used to represent Tacoma. I called Adam, and I asked him to sign on to the Grijalva letter. Raul Grijalva is the House of Representatives from the state of Arizona, and he and a number of other House of Representative members have sent a letter to Obama asking to extend deferred action to the 11 million people. So far, he has not responded. Pelosi, yesterday, called on Obama to stop the deportations. So the pressure is on. We have to bring more and more pressure on this guy. Because that's the only way he understands it. The only way Obama gave deferred action to 1.7 million young people was because they were taking over his offices when he was on the campaign. Yeah. You know? yeah they were occupying his offices, and he couldn't, you know, he all of a sudden found himself being the bad guy. So he created the deferred action. And they had been talking about deferred action for a number of months before that. But they, were, they didn't want to do it. Now we have 11 million people. Now how did 11 million people come into this country undocumented? How did they get here? I mean, can you ever phantom how, how, how do you get the people displaced from one country to another? I don't know of any Mexicano that loves this cold weather. You know? I don't know of any Mexicano that loves to have wet feet or to have moss growing on their side. You know? But they come here. They come here for the jobs, in the construction, in the fishing industry, in the farming industry, in the agricultural industry and in the service industry, millions and millions and millions of them. And the reason they, they are here is because of U.S. policies, U.S. monetary policies. The banks, the ones Obama took out of the hole, were the same ones that created this situation that we're in right now. He knows that, the rest of the country knows it, but they don't want to do anything about it. It's going to be up to you, it's going to be up to us to pressure Obama to make sure that he provides deferred action for 11 million people, and that is the only way we're going to be able to move forward. The only way we're going to be able to stop this and have enough gumption to get on the next, on the next president who may be a Democrat and push them to create a real bill, not this piece of shit that they wrote, which was the S-744. That would have, that was a, a, I don't know if any guy, how many guys have read that 744? It's only about, about 3,000 pages, you know? You didn't have any, you, you, you were not sleepy, huh? <laughs> well, you know, the, that, that legislation was a pile of junk from the time that people registered to the time they were going to be getting their documentation, out of 11 million people, maybe 1.6 million would have come out at the end after 15 years waiting and getting and doing the work. All this pressure is on workers to keep the, the, the wages down. 
It's a way to keep people disorganized. It's a way to keep people from moving on what their rights are. This is what they're doing with this immigration law. And they're keeping us divided from other workers. That's why we have to fight for that $15 an hour wage. We have to fight for any little bit that workers can get in this frigging country. And we have to do it together. You know, there is no ands, ifs, or buts. I think we have, um, you know, when you get some knowledge about what's going on in this country, you have an obligation. You have an obligation to start organizing. You need to have an obligation to start thinking and talking to other people. You can't just say, well, you know, I'm going to leave it to somebody else, right? No. It's our obligation. It's all, we're a collective of workers, and we're going to change this country one way or another. We have no choice. The way this country is going, the rest of the world is going, is, is going to be disastrous. We are, as, as a species, may not exist. We're not just talking about immigration here. We're talking about our whole ability as a species to survive. We have to fight. We have no choice. And I want to thank all of you for coming out here. This place is a horrible place inside. I don't know. You guys never been inside. I had the opportunity because my son is an attorney, and he invited me to one of his first cases here. And I went in there, and I met friends of mine that had worked with me in the struggle years ago who are now working as guards in there. And I told him, what the fuck are you doing here? You know, it's a, a job, you know? They're not, they're non-union. They get paid miserable wages, but it's a job. That This is, this is insane what's going on where people are having to force themselves to do this kind of work of being nothing but hurting humans around and detaining humans. It's like an animal farm. That's what it, this place is. And I don't think we're going to bring it down today, but we're going we're gonna to bring it down. Okay? All right. Well, thank you very much. And we'll see you again. Uh, remember May 1st, we're going to be marching on the streets again this year, and we're going to make it a big one. Thank you. Baby. Thank you. Okay, so uh